Okay guys, we are back. It is part two of the Max to Phase Shift to Max <laughs> tutorial. And we are in Phase Shift at the moment and I have uh, created a animation, uh, well I've created a performance should I say. Um, this was used for my comparison cutscene that I did of Devil May Cry and this is the actual take that I used to make that. Um, I've loaded up my profile and everything. I'm not going to go through the whole setup and training thing because there, there's heavy documentation on that already. And a lot of it comes down to trial and error. Um, so I've loaded up uh, my video here, I've loaded up my profile, and I'm just going to show you quickly uh, what the animation looks like uh, on these two before we go ahead and put our mesh in that we created in the last video. So. Dante! Don't shoot! My name is Kat, I'm not a demon! I'm still in the real world, you're in limbo. How come I can see you clearly? I'm a medium, a psychic. I can phase into limbo and communicate with you. I can see you, talk to you, but I'm not actually in limbo with you. I'm I'll die. I'm risking my life here for you. I want to help. I don't need your help. The hunter has dragged you into limbo. I can get you out. I've been down here before. I know how to get out. Fight whatever shit second demon dragged you in here. You don't want to fight the hunter. He's not your regular demon. Follow me now. So that is it. Um, hopefully the audio did play then, if not I'll probably would have overlaid it so you wouldn't have noticed anyway. Um, but yeah, this has gone through a couple of cleanups, uh, it's gone through the retrack and the, 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 the refine, uh, the filter options have also been changed. Uh, but what we're interested in is getting this animation onto our mesh in order to take it back into Max for the actual cleanup that it deserves, Max or Maya. Um, I always find that the animation on this middle one here is always a little bit janky because it's always trying to uh, follow exactly what your face shape is like, but I always find that using uh, the macaw target here as just a um, uh, an idea of what it is going to look like is, is, is a good example here. So in order for us to get our animation out of this, um, there's a couple of things we could do. The first thing we could do is we could export Macaw here, or export just the generic um, the generic face here, and uh, get all the coefficients out, which is all of these uh, different blend shapes. And you can see here that uh, I blink right here, and you can see all of the different blend shapes that I'm hovering over here, uh, and what they're actually doing at the bottom, and and you know the the you know the values of what is actually happening with these things. Um, you could export this out uh, with all of these values and then what you could do is copy over the curves from one mesh to another. I find that to be a bit laborious. Uh, what I prefer to do is import my own mesh and then take it out of uh, phase shift, export it from phase shift, put it back into max and then you've got the mesh that you originally had um, with all of the blend shape data on from these coefficients here. Um, and then you can just go and clean that up via the curve editor. So what we're going to do first is we are going to import our uh, our mesh. If you just come down to, if I go back a second, at the very bottom here, um, under I don't know if it's yeah it is under display. Uh, there is an import button here. So if we go to import and then load target, if I come to the desktop here, you can see our face FBX that we made in the last video. And when you import it in, depending on your scale and everything, it might be really small. I'm just going to put mine up to 20. And you'll notice that it's a little bit lower than that head, uh, which is absolutely fine. This is all just things that uh, change with different files and and what you've actually done to your face. So if you're lower in the Z, then it will be probably lower in the Z. Um, and the way that uh, this normally would uh, push itself up into the correct position is via using this joint neck here, which if you remember from the last video, I deleted all other um, bones. So uh, that would be a good reason to keep that in, but what you can see here is if you come to joint eye left, we actually have our bone here um, that we skinned to the left eye. And uh, what you're first going to do is just get those sorted out. So uh, you'll notice here as well that the texture isn't on the eyes. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I'm not sure if it's because the FBX uh, hasn't exported the texture with it. Um, 
or I'm not sure if it can handle mat uh, multiple material IDs. I'm not entirely sure, but rest assured it will work. If we had our neck here, we could put that in um, and it would push the, the, the face up a little bit into the, the correct position. But for what, for just for the testing purposes here and just for showing you how it works, um, this should be fine. So, blend shapes. You can see here the uh, face shift here, the blend shapes. These are all the blend shapes that we would have set up in the previous video, um, correlating to all of the different blend shapes that face shift uh, can use. So what you're basically going to do is, if I can make this bigger, I'm not entirely sure, yeah I can, okay. Pull this over a little bit. What you're basically going to do is click on a blend shape here, a face shift uh, blend shape, and then find the correlating blend shape over here. So what we're looking for, eye blink left, more for eye blink left, and just type in a value of one. So now, anytime there is a blink, um, it will know from, from from mapping this blend shape onto the values in here that 100% of a left eye blink is that. And you can kind of see where this is going to go now if I if I just go through these quickly and um, and punch in all the values. In some cases, you may have to alter the values slightly. Um, because you may have done a blend shape which was maybe a little bit overzealous. It was maybe uh, a little, a little uh, that you know the smile ones are the ones that really get me whenever I try and do a smile. Um, I always make the smile just ridiculously um, too smiley, and it often comes out looking rather creepy when you you're trying to get your your animations out, and it doesn't look natural whatsoever. Uh, I have, oh no, I have done this right. Okay. So what I'm going to do quickly so you don't have to sit here and watch me go through all this is I'm just going to go down these and and settle these up. Basically, just so you know what I am doing, I'm literally just going down this list, finding the correlating one, putting in a value of 1. Uh, when it comes to the smiles, just kind of be wary, maybe a 0.5, maybe a point, point 0.75 or something, just something that doesn't look too creepy. And yeah, when I come back, all of these will hopefully be done. So for, uh, let's just say for jaw open here. So we've got more for jaw open. There should be another jaw open around here. If I can find it. There we go. So we've got more for jaw open here with a space and I've created one called more for jaw open without a space. So uh, what is actually happening here is the jaw open is happening in the jaw but it's not actually happening in the mouth. So if we add both of those you will see that the, uh, the jaw is open here. So if we take this one away you'll notice that the teeth just stay there, which is not what we want. So basically all you need to do is to um, basically add these on to two different sections here. So on jaw open you want the actual mouth to open and you want the actual teeth to fall down as well. So once you've done that, uh, the jaw should work fine. Okay, so all of the uh, all of the different blend shapes have been put in. As you can see, if I go down them here, uh, you can see they're all kind of correlating to each other. Uh, on the mouth, which I said I was going to have not an issue with, but um, not putting in the full values. Um, as you can see here on lip stretch, uh, right and left, for example, if I put in a value of one here, that just looks ridiculous. So bringing it back down to 0.5 is is a good thing. So we've put in all of our, our data, it's all correlating. Now what you can do is we can save the mapping. I'm just going to put this back on my desktop. We can save the mapping so that we never have to um, we never have to create this map set again. Uh, we can basically load this onto other meshes that have the exact same morph targets, uh, blend shapes and morph targets um, and just basically put those values straight over. It it's probably not great if you're with the, with the mouth, as I say. It's probably not great if you're uh, if you've kind of learned not to be so overzealous on those mouth shapes, and all of a sudden you're getting um, uh, under animating of the mouth. Um, so, personally, I'd probably do this individually for each one. But for for the sake of argument here, we'll call this face mapping, so we can always come back and use this again, I guess. Um, 
up here as well uh, with the face we can also affect the translation just so it it, uh, it uh, kind of does what this joint neck thing would uh, would actually do um, so I believe it's yeah so we can just we can just push it up a little bit here um, just so we're kind of oh god no keep going up keep going up you can make it you can make it I probably just should have put a value in for this uh, 85, 90, okay, 90. So yeah, so as you can see now, we're kind of in the in the, the same position here. Uh, and that is it. So now if we, if we just rename this to, I don't know, let's call it uh, face top. And we hit OK. There we go. We see our face plonked into face shift and it likes to change the color of these sometimes. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but now, if we hit play... Dante! Don't shoot! My name is Kat, I'm not a demon! I'm still in the real world, you're in limbo. How come I can see you clearly? I'm a medium, a, a psychic. I can phase into limbo and communicate with you. I can see you, talk to you, but I'm not actually in limbo with you. I'll die. I'm risking my life here for you. I want to help. I don't need your help. The hunter has dragged you into limbo. I can get you out. I've been down here before. I know how to get out. Why would ever shit second demon drag you in here? You do not want to fight the hunter. He's not your regular demon. Follow me. Now. Okay, so now what we need to do once once we've got all this in here and this uh, this animation is kind of working and we're happy with how the blend shapes look and everything is a good start for cleanup, we need to uh, export the sequence. So if we go to export and we want to export as an FBX, if we go to our desktop again, uh, there, we've got our uh, our face. We should have our face FBX somewhere. I don't know where that's disappeared to. <laughs> But we're going to name this, let's say, uh, face shift face. Uh, it's going out as an FBX, and the the target here that we want to export as is face touch, so we actually get our face back out. We don't want rotation applied on the neck joint, and we don't want any uh, translation to be applied because we're going to be doing all of that in Max when we skin it to our character. Uh, FBX 2013, I guess, or 2012, whichever one you want to you want to use. Uh, you can export the audio if you want to, and you can expect uh, export the audio as a JPEG. We don't need to do any of that. And then I'm just going to hit save, and then you'll see down here it's loading in the FBX for it to do all of the animation for. And then when that is done, which is that. We are ready to move on to the third and final step, which is importing this back into Max. So I will see you in that next video, and I hope everyone has, uh, has been able to follow along so far.